On today's episode, I'm going to take this stock image and turn it into this piece of digital art. Now, I'll be using Topaz Gigapixel AI. I'll be using Photoshop, the neural filter called Style Transfer, and we'll be using a Topaz Studio 2, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I'm working with the stock image which I will link in the description below so you can download it and follow along with me. It's a very small image. As you can see, it's 1920 by 1280 pixels. So what I'm going to do is upsize it four times and it will end up being 7680 by 5120 because I want to turn it into a piece of digital art. Oh, and by the way, Gigapixel AI is on sale right now. It's normally $99.99 on sale for $79.99 up to uh, the 14th of this month. And by the way, you can also get the image quality bundle on sale, normally $259.97 for $199.99. Now, you can also click on my affiliate link in the uh, description below. It'll take you to the sales and use my promo code David Kelly. That's David Kelly, all one word. At checkout, you'll receive another 15% off, which is a nice savings it helps my channel out and you save a nice savings so thank you so much for all of you who use my affiliate links to purchase software i do have a bunch of videos on gigapixel ai so i'm going to jump right into this and uh you can go back and watch some of my other videos if you want to get more up to speed with gigapixel ai i brought this stock image into gigapixel ai i just went up to file and op open images and pointed my file browser to where this image was residing at and now it's in Gigapixel, and I clicked on four times. I'm gonna upsize it four times, because remember it was 1920 by 1280, and this will get me up to 7680 by 5120. So in case I wanna print this out and hang it up in my house or whatever, if I wanna sell some digital art, whatever I wanna do, but it's gonna be upsized to four times. Now, we have these different AI options here, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into this image at about 100% so you can really see it. It takes a second to upsize here. But what I ended up doing was I went through the different models here and I ended up liking the Art and CG. And the reason I like the Art and CG, it's a special, I don't know, let's call it an algorithm. I don't know if that's what Topaz actually called, but let's say it's designed for digital art. And so when I do that, already it already kind of smooths the image out a good bit. And my settings are set at auto right now, but and I normally use auto, but in this case, I'm going to take the suppressed noise and take it the whole way to the right. In other words, I want to remove as much noise out of this as I can. Not that it even has noise, but I'm, I'm thinking I want the image to be have less detail in it. So I'm really jacking up the suppressed noise to take some take as much detail out as I can before I get it back into Photoshop. Because remember, I'm going to turn it into a painting. So paintings don't have a lot of uh, information in them. You know, they're more brush strokes and things like that. So I don't want a really detailed photograph. So by bumping up the suppressed noise is going to help me. And that's a little tip for you. Remove blur. I don't want to make this image real sharp, you know, because I could really sharpen it up here. But I don't. I'm going to take the remove blur the whole way down. And again, I'm thinking a digital painting. Now let's take a look at this at zoom to fit so we can see the original size here. And it takes a second or two to uh, go ahead and update itself. So that's what it looks like. Now if I click uh, on the canvas here, left click with my mouse and hold this down, here's the before and here's the after. I don't know if you'll be able to see much difference there, but uh, let me go ahead and zoom into, let's zoom into, let's go into 200% here. And I'll click, here's the before, and you can see how pixelated it is, because remember, it's only 1920 by 1280, but now, at 200%, it looks like this. And it already has a painterly look due to this suppressed noise up, and I think using this, I'm calling it an algorithm, art and CG, okay? So now all I have to do is save it out. So I'm going to click Save Image. Now I'm going to save it as a TIFF, because this is just what I do, 16-bit depth, because I want maximum resolution here. And I'm going to work with the color profile of Profoto RGB because that's what I work with. I'm going to save this back to the source directory. I'm going to click save. And just in a few seconds here, it'll save itself. Now, by the way, there this is a new update uh, for Gigapixel AI. It's relatively within the past couple of weeks. And that's why the sale is on right now. Because anytime Topaz put out 
a new update, they always put their products on sale. That's just a little tip for you. I'm now in Photoshop and I went ahead and opened up my gigapixel upsized image and brought it into Photoshop. And now I want to run it into a neural filter, Photoshop's new neural filters. And I'm going to use, uh, what's it called, style transfer. Just click this right here. Now I have videos on style transfer. If you want to go back and watch some of those, just look on my YouTube channel. You'll find them. And I have one of these images in mind or paintings in mind. And that's this one here with these waves. Now I'm going to click on this. And takes it a second or two, and it goes ahead and transfers that style onto my painting. So isn't that cool right there? It looks really nice. I think it looks really beautiful. And I even like the color, but I don't want that color. So what I'm going to do is come here and click on Preserve Color. Just real simple. Give it a second or two, and it'll put the original color back on. And I like it. And all I'm going to do at this point is... I'm going to output it to a new layer. I'm just going to click OK. And that's all I'm going to do in the style transfer filter. What I'll do next is send this into uh, Topaz Studio 2. Before I send this into Studio 2, this is very important. And pay particular attention to me here. If I shut off this background layer, because remember, I sent this in as a new layer. And here it is right here, layer 1. If I shut the background layer off, check my image out. Can you see this uh, transparency showing through here? right in these areas here. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really see it. Can you see right through here, different areas? There's different places it, it left some of the original image in it. So that's a problem if you send that into, into uh, Studio 2. Things aren't going to be right. And you can see even like right in this area, right in here, there's a lot of information that isn't here. And that's not good. You don't want that, okay? So here's what you need to do. Let me go ahead and resize this. I'm going to zoom in here one more time because I want to show you. See that transparent area right there? When I turn the background layer back on, watch that. That will fill in. Do you see that? So that's, that's, what, that's good. That's what we want. We don't want any transparency shown through the image because if you send that into Topaz Studio 2, that transparency will be there. So what you need to do is pull this image all together, combine the background layer with layer one, and you just have to stamp the layers. And that is Shift, Option, Command, or Control E, stamps your layers together. And now we can come up here to Filter and we can click on Topaz Studio 2 and we'll send that stamp layer into Topaz Studio 2. And then we'll be in good shape. We won't have any issues. That's very important. So don't forget that one. In Topaz Studio 2, I'm going to start out by coming up here to add look. Now, I've already created a look for this and it was nothing more than an impression filter on it. And I'll show you here. And it is this guy right now, right down here at the bottom. I'm not even going to wait till these fill themselves in, but it's water and sky. I'm going to click apply and you'll see in a second or two here what my image looks like. It'll look more like a painting now. Isn't that cool? I really like it. And all it is is the impression filter with hardly anything on it. And I'll show you what I've done here. I use this type 11 brush and the only other thing I did was I, I left the number of strokes high because here's medium strokes. You'll see what it looks like with medium strokes. And that's not bad. And here's low strokes. It'll have less detail with low strokes. Okay. But I used high because I liked the little extra detail I was getting. And it kind of reminds me more of like a watercolor type image at this point. But I'm going to do some further work outside of impression. I'm going to use another filter, but stay tuned for that. But the, the paint opacity, I just bumped it up to like 55. And the only other thing I did was these stroke... The stroke width and length normally sit at 50. I just bumped this one up to 60, made the stroke a little wider, and the length, uh, or I'm sorry, I said 50. Let me go ahead and reset this. It's zero. I'm sorry, I said 50, but it's really zero. But let me put this back up to, where was it at? 60, I believe it was, and I like that right there. Let's see, 61, close enough. And I changed this from zero to 44. Okay, and the spill, I just bumped the spill up to 10 just to give it a little extra spill. Now that's at 10. So watch the, watch the image as I pull the spill up and you'll see it. See how it spills out everywhere. So if you want to have a more, uh, more abstract look, you can really pull, up, pull that spill up. But I wanted just a little bit of that extra spill. So I took this up to a 10, a 0 0.10. And then I went down to lighting. And what I did in lighting was I just gave it a little extra contrast. 
and I pulled the highlights back a little bit because I thought my highlights were just a little too hot. And I uh, I changed the shadows here. If you double click these, you'll reset them back. So I just added a little extra uh, darkening to my shadows just to, to build that contrast up a little bit further. This contrast gave me a little extra boost, but then I wanted just a little bit more. So I used the shadow there. And I added a slight amount of vignette to it. And I just took this vignette. Normally, it's going to sit here. And I bumped it up to a 19. And that's all I did with the impression filter. Now, I wanted to take a little bit of detail out of the sky and the water. But not the buildings. Because I want our eye to be drawn to these buildings. So what I did next was went to add filter. Went to precision detail. Now, precision detail is great for adding detail to small areas of detail, medium and large areas of detail. But you can also remove detail with it, too. So that is another powerful feature of the precision detail filter, not only to add, but to remove. So on the overall small detail, I took it to the left, the whole way to the left, and just removed detail. Now, look how nice and smooth that sky gets. Because I want it to look like more soft, more, more like a watercolor or something like that. So I pulled that detail out and then I went to the medium detail and I started to pull it back as well. And I kept working with it till I thought it looked good. If I take it the whole way back, which it won't, it'll look really kind of muddy up in here and I don't like that. So I don't want to take all that detail out. So the medium, I was a little more careful. And I took it back to somewhere right around there to give me that nice smoothed out look in the sky and in the water down here. And then the large detail... Let me take some of that out. And, you know, maybe something like that. Now, I really like the overall look of this image. And I wanted to bring detail back here. So what do you think I'm going to use? Yes, you guessed it, a layer mask. So let's turn on the layer mask. And with this white layer mask, which is revealing all that smoothing out that I've done with the detail filter, precision detail filter, I'm going to click on the brush tool and paint with black transparency. And we'll adjust our brush size here. To something like that and I'm gonna leave the softness right at default at 50 and the radius well I changed it to 22 I'm gonna leave the edge wear turned on and what I'm gonna do is bring that detail back by painting along these buildings in here when I release it'll go ahead and you'll see see that detail coming back in isn't that cool and don't forget the edge wear is turned on as well so I'm just gonna paint all this detail back in here now when I get up to here I think I want Maybe a little less detail here. So I'm going to take this transparency and let's bump it up to around like 45 or something like that. And I'll just paint even on these trees here, up in here, paint this detail back in. But not quite as much. We'll leave a little bit of that detail off. And by changing that transparency to 43, it won't be quite as strong. You see that? Because I want our eye to go mainly in this area right here. And what I think I also want to do is bring some detail on some of the water here. So let's experiment with this amount of transparency. Let's make my brush a little bit larger. And I'm just going to paint along here on the water. Just on, the, on some of these uh, ripples in the water. Not everywhere, but just on the ripples. And see how that looks. Yeah, and that just adds a little nice little detail in there, which I think it adds some interest. So we have this buildings back in here with some detail. Our eyes draw right to them. We have this nice smooth sky and this nice smooth water in these hills back here, mountains, whatever they are. Oh, let's bring in this tower. I'm going to make my radius a little bit smaller and let's just paint on this tower right here and just bring that detail back. Okay, now I brought that back with... Uh, 43%. Let's bring it back with uh, 100%. So I changed that to black. Just bring all that detail back in there. Now, if you le left click on your canvas, you can see the before and the after. So the before, and that was with the neural filter, and it looked cool, right? But now it's less busy because of the impression filter. And now by using the precision detail filter, I brought some more smoothness back into the sky. And I just really think it looks really nice. Now, once we're happy with this, then we could send it back to Photoshop. But you know what, before I do, I missed this little area right down here. So I'm just gonna bring that detail back in that little bit of area. You know, you gotta pay attention to these little um, details, okay? So now I'm happy with it. So now we can send it back into Photoshop. All we need to do is click accept and we'll be right back in Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. So we started out with this image right here. 
and we end up with this image. Okay, so now let me shut these two layers off. Okay, so here's the original background, upsized with Gigapixel AI, brought into Photoshop, and then we ran it through Photoshop's neural filter, which I really like, called the Style Transfer Filter. And I like it, but it's a little busy for me, but I like the artistic way it's going. So I thought I'll team this up with another filter and I'll use Topaz Studio 2, which I like to refer to as my creative toolbox. We sent it in and now we end up with this image and I'm happy with it. Well, let me put it this way. I'm almost happy with it, but I'm going to do a couple other little tiny things to it. So stay with me here and this will make a big difference. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer here and that's Command or Control J. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to linear light. I'm going to take the fill slider and draw it down to around a 19 or a 20. Because what I want to do is add some real nice color pop to these buildings here, but not to the entire image. I don't like it everywhere. So what I'll do is put a black mask on here. So I'm going to hold my option or alt key down and click on the layer mask here. Puts a black mask on there. And all I'm going to do is simply take a paintbrush and I'm going to paint with white paint at 100% opacity. And I'll make my brush a little bit larger. And I'm going to paint that, that color pop onto these buildings here, which I think will be really, really nice, especially in this area. And then when I get over here, what I'll do is drop the opacity on my brush down to about like maybe 40% and paint that on here. I might paint it a couple times if I don't feel it's strong enough. And even on these trees here. Uh, I'm going to take it to 20% and paint over these buildings here one more time. Right there. And then I'm also going to paint on this water. Bring a little bit of detail into this water here. And a little bit of color pop. So it adds some contrast as well, which is really nice. And maybe on this little section out here, I'll just throw a little bit of detail there. Okay, but that's the linear light blend mode. Now, I recently have done a video on the linear light blend mode, so I'll try to remember to link it at the end of this video. You may want to go and watch it. So here it is uh, with the linear light blend mode before and after. But see how your eye now goes to the buildings. And we have this beautiful soft muted colors on the sky and these mountains and in the water here. But I love it. And you know what? I missed the tower here. So let me get my brush at 100%. And make it a little smaller and paint this in, okay? Because I want that tower to be strong as well. And the last thing I want to do is darken the bottom of this painting just to close it out. And to do that, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. And simply put it in the multiply blend mode. Okay, that darkens everything up. And then I'm going to invert this mask here. Command or Control I to invert it. I'm going to get a gradient tool and make sure you're on the mask here. And what I'm going to do is, and you can change your gradients here. I'm just going to use this first gradient right here. And all I'll do is hold my shift key down. That'll keep my line constrained to a straight line. And just drag this up a little bit like that. And just to darken off that edge. I just want that image to be closed off. Let me shut this properties down. So here's the before and here's the after. See how it just closes that off with that little bit of a gradient there. And I think it looks really good. Well, there it is, everyone. Give this one a try. I went ahead and added a digital frame using Topaz Studio 2 because I think it's a good way, especially if you want to sell art, if you want to put it online or something like that, putting it in a digital frame really, you know, makes it stand out. And uh, But give this one a try. Don't forget to download the... Uh, the stock image, the link will be provided below in the description. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.